You're with Life Works, where the ancient wisdom for modern living. Now, you nicely explain uh, how it happens, uh, the hay fever, Veronica. Now, on the Ayurvedic perspective, what are the remedies and uh, what are the things that you can do for... For hay fever, hay fever. to elevate hay fever yeah, symptoms. That's right. So, I would suggest you don't do it when you get hay fever, but also start doing it beforehand Before to that. prevent hay fever from happening because I mean, it's not a it's something that you know you will die of it tomorrow, but yeah. it's extremely inconvenient. Correct. You know, it stops you from doing the things that you want to there do, simple things that you just don't feel like doing it, mm -hmm. right? I remember a couple of years ago when I used to be uh, getting that hay fever. Mm -hmm. It's so painful, you know, you're working the whole day, you're trying to do your best and at night you can't even go to bed because mm -hmm. your airways are blocked, yeah. your air passages are blocked. So it's extremely inconvenient and uh, it's something that we can easily get rid of, yeah. right? Uh, so these would be similar things to hay fever, remember, and allergies are also to do with your immunity, yeah. right? So there are similar practices that you would follow in order to keep an immune system. Mm -hmm. So when you do those practices that I've mentioned, for building immunity, if you follow the same practices, you're also making sure that your body is not going to get with, get hit with hay fever. Mm. But if you do get hit, hit with hay fever, this is what I would suggest you to do. One is, you know, scraping your tongue. It's extremely important. Mm. The reason why scraping your tongue, it, it is hardly a 30 second uh, exercise, job, yeah. exercise to do in the morning, but make it part of your daily routine. Mm. Reason being is between 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock at night. You know, think of it like roadworks. When everything is quiet, roadworks happen. Clean up. Similarly, in our body, that's when the cleanup happens. Mm -hmm. The lymphatic system goes into a drive and starts expelling the toxins from your deeper tissues. Mm -hmm. Now, we expel our toxins on a daily basis to our feces, our urine, and also our sweat. Yes. Uh, but the deeper tissue toxins also uh, are coming out through our on our tongue and in the on our soles of our feet okay that's why in uh, japan they have this thing where they have these japanese you know those uh, pads for your sole of your feet yeah deep where you fit pad. them well done so you put them on your uh, feet at night and sleep because the toxins that are pushed by your lymphatic system whilst you're sleeping at night comes out on your tongue and on your feet, feet yeah. so when you wake up in the morning you always end up with a furry tongue mm. you know with that pinkish yeah, tongue yeah. that's because all of the toxins are mm. on the tongue now Don, I just want to mention here is that I see a lot of young families where you know when their children are going to school they feed their children breakfast and after breakfast they ask them to do the oral hygiene of yeah. brushing their teeth and whether scraping of the tongue mm. is there or not that is not a good practice to Correct. follow you must always wake up in the morning and Brush your teeth, the oral first hygiene first thing, and scrape your tongue. Very, very important because all the work that your lymphatic system has done in the night to remove your toxins on your tongue need to be scraped up. Scraped up. Okay? So that is a very important thing that you do. That is one. Number yeah. one. When you get up in the morning, do yourself a favor. Go and buy a copper tongue scraper tongue or a stainless steel tongue scraper. You don't get these two in the pharmacies, you get a plastic one. But uh, are you ready for online stores? I do have it too. Yeah. Uh, do it with that. Number two is that on an empty stomach, I've mentioned this before, have this uh, immune water. Immune water. Immune water. Very simple. Anybody can do it at home. You boil water, boil it with ginger and turmeric. Hmm. So maybe half a piece of ginger and maybe a half a teaspoon or half quarter teaspoon of ginger. Yeah. Uh, boil it. And you can boil two cups of water, bring it down to half. Mm. Once it's warm to hot, drinkable temperature, mm. add honey, lemon juice, and you can also add fennel. Okay. Fennel powder is very, mm. very good for mm. the respiratory system. Okay. You have that on an empty stomach in the, morning. in the morning. After that, you might have another glass of water. Very, mm. very good because think of it, we wash our bodies every day on the outside. But mm. what is washing our inside system? Exactly. So that is like a cleanse for the inside. Mm. So ginger, lemon, honey, they all act as anti-inflammatory, cleaning up like an internal soap, mm. internal edible soap for your inside system. That's interesting. Yeah, think of it like that because we can't take a brush and true, true. clean it out, right? So do that in the morning on an empty stomach. Mm. Go for your walk, do some yoga, do something. Activate your body in the morning. Mm. Very, very important. Yeah. Activate your body first thing in the morning. You do that and after that you can have breakfast, okay? Now food is very very important, you've heard me saying that. Food 
is the cause of very good health on the contrary food can also be a cause of ailments depends on the food that you eat yeah, and also your digestive tract it helps if you eat the wrong food your digestive tract is not going to be so strong your digestive tract weakens okay yeah so you have to have good food also mm. uh in terms of food for hay fever especially specifically for hay fever you must always have warm nourishing foods okay means cook foods okay don't have cold foods all right don't have canned food don't have processed foods things like ice cream soft drinks cold water will just make your hay fever symptoms worse and further weaken your digestive fire okay okay it will not only give you, let the hay fever symptoms persist but it's also weakening your immune system all right so always eat warm cooked foods number two thing in terms of food what i would ask you to avoid is meat because meat red is extremely meat. red meat meat is heavy to digest so okay. so when you have heavy to digest your body is trying to recoup and uh-huh. trying to build its strength for hay fever but then if you put heavy food then all the energy goes there to digest the food so meat so i would ask you to have light foods light foods would be you know most indians and people from the asian culture yeah. will be familiar with these foods but for people who are not familiar with indian food it's called a khichdi mm. khichdi is one of the best things that you can put in your body okay. and a khichdi is pretty much the original khichdi is made of dal and rice all right moong dal and rice it's extremely nutritious it's body building it's strengthening you get mm. your full protein out of that you don't need to eat meat to get your full protein all right you can have moong dal and rice between moong dal and rice you get the full suite of 17 amino acids mm. all of your protein okay but uh, despite apart from that what is magical about is it's very light on your digestion mm. right yes. so you can get protein from meat meat is heavy on digestion yes so therefore moong dal and rice or you can just have a rice porridge you know sweet rice semolina porridge a tapioca porridge mm. tapioca beets that you get yeah yeah tapioca is really good so you can have but have warm and cooked foods mm. and very important to have cook your food with lots of herbs or aushadham i always call them aushadham yeah you can call them spices but when you look at them as aushadham then it makes it more important and then you think oh my god why do i need to have medicines when i have these medicinal in my kitchen cupboard i have Correct. my medicines so cook your food with uh, uh, spices that give heat mm. things like cumin coriander uh, cloves yes. cinnamon bay leaves these are very very good not i'm not talking about chili powder okay because chili powder is extremely pungent and inflammatory okay. you can eat chili sometimes but when you have hay fever best to stick with spices that are creating heat right. because when you're creating heat in your body two things are happening one you're improving your digestion because these things help with digestion yeah. of your food and number two because they have heat they're liquefying that toxins and mucus okay the clearing of the oh, passages yeah. you understand as a as a cleanser as a cleanser it's muc liquefying all that mucus build up okay so cook your food with these kind of spices and if you cannot cook your food with these kind of spices the thing that i would suggest is again boil a pot of water mm. boil 1 2 liters of water and put cinnamon sticks put bay leaves put cloves mm. put peppercorn black mm. pepper black pepper is a very good uh, it's a bronchodilator okay bronchodilator means bronco means bronchial bronchial passages okay okay and dilator means it's dilating it all right so it's liquefying the mucus and creating space so that the air passage moves air passage is clear okay so just take a oh, let let's say 1 liter of water for one person or 2 liters of water put uh, you know two three sticks of cloves put around uh, five uh black Uh, pepper corns. Pepper corns, yeah. Put around five cloves. Mm. Put around maybe uh, you know two inches pieces of ginger in it. Boil it. it becomes half. Simmer. It becomes one liter. Boil it, simmer it. Once it becomes one liter, put it off the fire. And then you can add lemon juice if you want. You just have had honey also. Honey is also very good. Mm. And you consume it all throughout the day. That's so that will get rid of your hay fever and any congestion and sinuses. It will just get rid of it. Okay, so good. Yeah, so good. yeah, you can do that. The other things that you can do for hay fever, I'll be quick because we yeah. want people to get the maximum benefit out of the same. Yeah. So you can do that. So one, I said scraping tongue. Number two is empty stomach. Have that immune drink that I mentioned. Don't really put these recipes. Sure. Okay. Sure. The third thing is uh, have warm cooked foods every day. Have light foods, lighter foods, vegetable soups, steamed vegetables, 
put a little bit of uh, so you can uh, flavor it with salt, Himalayan salt or rock salt, yeah. black pepper, yeah, and a little bit of ghee. Ghee is very good. Mm. We must have a topic on ghee. That's one yeah, thing that is true. I love ghee. So you cook those kind of food, then you can have prepare a uh, hay fever water to mm. fight the hay fever water. Mm. You can make that water and drink it all throughout the day. Drink it for five days straight. Hay fever will disappear, and plus you feel very strong. Cook with spices in your food. The other thing that I would like you to do is uh, for congestion, yeah. you do uh, this tapping of your sinuses. Okay. All over your sinuses. So here's your biggest sinuses. Tap it. Okay. Here's your smaller sinuses, your ethnoid sinuses. Tap it. Here's your frontal side. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. When you're watching TV, sitting down, tap it. Because what is doing is this is activating and dislodging the mucus that is stuck there. It's okay. also helping it liquefying it. So you can do that five minutes a day. That is very very good. Five minutes a day in the morning or the evening. Any time when okay. you're sitting watching TV, just do it. You know, you can do it more times in the day, but right. at least do it once because you're doing that is very very good. And another practice that I suggest is it's called nasya. All right. Okay. I do nasya every day because I'm qualified and I know how to do it. It is the it is a practice of putting some medicated oils in your nostril. So you tilt your head back and you put three drops in each nostril and you breathe that in. And when you breathe that in, you can see that pungency of that medicated oil clearing up your nostrils, really liquefying and taking away all the toxins. So much so that for the next five or ten minutes, you're just going to be constantly spitting out. All of that liquefied mucus, oh, right. and it clears your nostrils completely. When people suffer from uh, very uh, chronic hay fever symptoms, with lots of congestion, we do an in-clinic nasya treatment for them. Okay. Where we really remove all the congestion from the sinuses and completely clean out your sinuses so that you have free air passages and you can breathe nicely. Okay. And uh, steam inhalations are very good to do. That is about to ask, how good is the steaming? Steam inhalations, inhalations are very, very good because again, you're providing heat and that heat is liquefying that mucus. Okay. So uh, the uh, recipe for steam inhalation, the right recipe, you boil uh, two liters of water. Okay. Or boil, yeah, boil two liters of water and put 10 drops of eucalyptus oil in okay. the water. So boil the water, put it into a bucket that you yeah. can get from anywhere. Put 10 drops of eucalyptus oil. Eucalyptus oil is available in most pharmacies. Yeah. And then, uh, when the water is not so hot, you don't want to burn your true, face. True. You, you just inhale. put a inhale. Just put a towel on your head, cover it, and inhale and inhale. And the first uh, type of inhalation, the first inhalation, you'll find it a little bit challenging because yeah, it's, it's hitting. It's hitting you. It's true. strong. Make sure that you shut your eyes and inhale from your nose. And just be peaceful about it and exhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, from the mouth. inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. That will clear out your sinuses. Okay. And if you can do that twice a day, once in the morning, morning is typically what we call is a kapha time. Kapha time means it's very cold. Even in summer, it is colder okay. than the rest of the day. Yeah. So it's a colder, denser, heavier time of the day. So it's very good to do it at that time and mm. hit it at that time. Mm. And again in the night, 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock is considered to be a kapha time of the day. Cold, dense, heavy, that is a good time to do it. It will also help you to breathe better and sleep better. Okay. And one last tip that I can give is sometimes both noses are blocked, then it's a bit difficult. But if one nose's nostril is blocked more than the other, if your right nostril is blocked, sleep on your left hand side. Oh. If your left nostril is blocked, sleep on your right hand side because that helps with the air passages and will give you some relief. If both your nostrils are blocked, sleep on an elevated pillow. Okay, elevated pillow. Elevated pillow slightly okay. because that helps with the yeah. the way our body is built, okay. our thing is built. And you can always uh, put a warm, uh, you know, like a warm heat bag on your face. Okay. As much or a hot towel. All right. Because what you're doing is you're trying to create heat to liquefy that mucus. All right. of these things you can yeah. do at home, and you can help. And it can help. Uh, there are there is one herb that uh, I, my personal favorite, mm. one herb is my favorite, it's a, it's a polyherbal formulation that I make and it has, uh, you know, uh, different peppers and ginger, dried ginger and I take that after a meal. Okay. It's called Trikatu mm -hmm. and uh, I know that uh, even when I have a heavy meal, you know, dawn if I have ice cream, okay. I take that immediately after that because that just 
just breaks it all down. It's so good. Plus it just breaks it all down, and you feel suddenly you feel. I've eaten a heavy meal, but I'm feeling like you can actually feel that working on your system, mm. where you feel, my God, it's really breaking it down, breaking anything that you've eaten, and breaking it down, creating heat, so you don't feel heavy and congested. So what was that one again? It's called trikatu. 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 So trikatu comes from the Sanskrit word two word. Three means trikatu. That's okay. where tree comes from. Yeah. Three, three, T R I in Sanskrit is three. That's yeah. where three come from. And katu means bitter. Okay. So it's a combination of three bitter herbs. Okay. Bitter herbs and pungent herbs that actually will help with uh, with yes. clearing your sinuses. So it's extremely good, and I use that on a regular basis. Okay. To be quite honest, okay. I use that on a regular basis because it is an overall health benefit, benefit. you get out of it. And that so when you take it on a daily basis, one you will not get hay fever symptoms. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you get heavy fever symptoms, you start taking it. It will help you reduce the symptoms. Mm. Amazing home remedies and practices that definitely get away from the hay fever and these conditions. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there are lots of other herbs. You know, holy basil. Mm. Uh, we call it tulsi. Okay. Uh, tulsi is uh, to tell you a story that in some, if you've seen an Indian movie. In Indian houses, they always have in the middle of the garden. Yeah. They have a, a pot. Pot. Okay. And a plant in it. That's yes. a tulsi plant. All oh, right. Okay. Now, even Indians, they think that that is a religion. It's part of the religion to go around the tulsi plant five times and pray. Okay. But when the any Indian tradition, what we do, nothing is to do with religion. Mm. It's to do with science. It's all backed by science. Mm. Now, the tulsi plant or the basil plant. Gives out a lot of oxygen. Okay, okay. It's one of the plants that give out more oxygen than other plants. All right, all right. So when you go around the tulsi tree, that means you're breathing in a lot of oxygen. Oh. Correct. So they made it into a religion because people like that. It's a religion to pray, but it's got nothing to do with religion. You can pray anywhere. Really, you don't need to pray in front of a statue or an idol or around a tulsi plant. Sure. But the tulsi plant gives a lot of uh, gives a lot of oxygen. And because you're getting a lot of oxygen, then it's cleaning up your rest. It's very good for your respiratory system. You understand? How how nicely connected these yeah. uh, values yes, yes, to yes. the next level. That's yeah. amazing. So right? tulsi is very good. Black pepper is very good. Ginger is very good because they're not only uh, we call them uh, bronchodilators, like mm. I mentioned earlier, but they're also immunomodulators. Mm. They also balance your immune system. So these are the things that I would normally give to a person if they're suffering from. Hay fever symptoms, and then I would also suggest them to continue using it, so that it completely makes your immune system very strong, strong and uh, maintains it. Correct. So it won't happen again. Good. That's what. That's good. important. Yeah. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Pleasure. Now, Veronica, you have mentioned uh, many home remedies that uh, anybody can practice at home. That's really important and really practical. But apart from that, uh, you have mentioned some of the products that you can. Uh, Definitely get benefited for the hay fever. Now, uh, can anybody uh, purchase from uh, you or any, anywhere? Oh yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, I mean, Ayurvedic herbal formulations are quite uh, specialized. Yeah. You don't get them everywhere. Uh, so you would normally want to buy from an Ayurvedic uh, store, which is normally online done. Okay. And further from that, I would say always make your purchases. From an Ayurvedic practitioner, once you've spoken with them, reliable personality. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You want to, yeah. you know, you want to speak to a practitioner because mm. they have the knowledge, you know. So uh, once they give you that knowledge, then you can go and do your own thing. But you need to buy. It. So my suggestion would be that I supply everything. Uh, of course, I don't supply everything willy nilly because it's not a business. Ayurveda is a yes. Ayurveda is a passion, you know, for health. It's a fashion so, and service. Yeah, so um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it's not just about buying some popping a pill and getting better. True. They're not uh, block. They're not in Ayurveda. None of the things herbs that we provide are blockers. It's not blocking the pain. Mm. They are anti-inflammatories. They are creating an intelligence in your body. They are going to the root cause of the problem to remove the root cause and give your body a fresh new start to be able to uh, do the things that it was meant to do. In yeah. the first place, true. So it, though it is about Ayurvedic, so it is about that. So it is not just about popping a pill, taking ashwagandha, or taking a holy basil pill, and thinking you can be all right. 
it's got to do with that it's got to do with your lifestyle your diet your you know your mental thinking it's got to do with all of that so it's a holistic thing correct so yes absolutely you can purchase them but my uh, a suggestion would be speak to an ayurvedic practitioner that you feel comfortable with you know you might call me up you might not feel comfortable with me that's fine go to somebody that you can trust because yeah. half the problem is that trust and that you know you feel nurtured and nourished yeah. by the person who is talking So, but yes, that's what I would suggest. Yes, and one last thing before we end up yes. the show. Apart from the show, you've been uh, talking with me uh, about the body treatments. Yes, yes, total yes. body treatments. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, you know, when I spoke to you earlier, I said you know about the toxin build up in your body. Yeah. So when your toxin, think of your toxins as covering all your internal organs. You know. so they are not able to do their function because they are covered with something yeah so they're not able to perform the function that they have to perform yeah. so think of toxins like that and you can detox your body to various things that we mentioned to you yeah. on, to you on earlier about in terms of your scraping your drinking that immunity water or the detoxifying sure. water cooking with spices yeah but the other thing that we strongly suggest in ayurveda is body treatments uh-huh. and there are different body treatments depending on the ailment that you have okay so when you have uh, you know when you want to become strong in strength through strengthening body treatments then you have something called an abhyangam which okay. is a massage and it is done with medicated oils suitable to your constitution or that is required to uh, we call it vikruti which is if you're suffering from an ailment mm. so specific oils and specific strokes to actually push out the toxins from the deeper tissues in your body okay so we suggest that strongly uh, in terms of that because uh, whilst you're doing internal stuff you also got to do external stuff your skin is the largest organ mm. so lots of detoxification can happen through your skin so we suggest something called uh, it's dry brushing which you can also practice at home mm. you can buy a sisal brush which is natural fibers mm. don't buy uh, plastic fibers okay. brushes okay. buy a sisal brush and it's a natural plant and you can do dry brushing we can tell you how to do the dry brushing is also important mm. because dry brushing helps to clean up all the toxins that are on your skin so like i said skin is the largest organ of the yeah. body so how much detox can you do on that and therefore we also suggest a massage because your skin is the largest organ and through your skin we can help you detox through ayurvedic uh, ayurvedic uh, medicated oil uh, massages which we call abhyanga yes absolutely thank you very much uh, you can comment us and you can uh, give your suggestions and uh, your ideas on our comment box thank you very much veronica for giving the uh, important points and uh, so much of knowledge and uh, let you share i just hope that uh, people who are viewing this put this into practice because the thing is that uh, i just end up with one thing which i read somewhere and i found it quite nice mm. it's like uh, when people listen to all of these things but don't put it into any practice into practice yeah it's similar to you going to different restaurants and reading the menu card but not ordering it <laughs> okay so just like that yeah. uh you know you wouldn't go to 10 restaurants open the menu you can't read everything and walk out you want to start ordering things sure. you want to start tasting things so it's really important to when you get little knowledge if you believe it then put it into practice straight away and make it part of your life make it a habit make it yourself for daily routines scraping of the tongue brushing the teeth before breakfast having your immunity detox water cooking with spices having warm nourishing foods avoiding cold water avoiding alcohol making meat a small part of your diet having fresh vegetables having seasonal vegetables exercising a good night's rest you know having ayurvedic herbs that will give you overall health benefits treating your body to a massage ayurvedic massage every every month or every two months so depending on your financial situation this of utmost importance i always say this it's also on my website i say the only place you will always live in you can never move house is your body but your body is the only place you will ever live in and permanently live in so you want to make sure that it's always keep this man and tidy and good and cool to live in every day of your life correct today we talk about uh, the hay fever and uh, so much of additional uh, information uh, veronica shared with us with her experience and her knowledge Thank you very much once again Veronica looking forward to uh, meet you another segment of uh, life works where ancient wisdom relates to modern living thank you very much again oh thank you so much don't for having me it was a real pleasure